hey vc how's it going right okay very quick video um last time i made a uh, a video of stuff which i picked up throughout the year which wasn't soul funk jazz or reggae so today i'm only going to show soul funk jazz or reggae so if that's your thing then happy days right Okay, this one is in the background. This is Juicy by Willy Bobo um, on the Verve label. Nice little bit of um, sort of Latin jazz. So yeah, lovely stuff. Right, okay. Um, I mentioned before that a couple of months ago I saw a video by Rob Paniques. Everybody knows Rob. Um, and it was all 45s that he's shown. I thought that's quite cool. So to start off with a few 45s. So I picked this up a few weeks ago. This is uh, on the New Beat label. This is Laurel Aitken with Pachanga, part one. Part two on the flip. Now, Laurel Aitken throughout the 60s made uh, um, so many wonderful ska records. Um, 1970, so this is a little bit later. And this is more of a straight funk tune than, um, than a reggae tune. That's what I think anyway. So I do need a drop on that. But I, yeah, I just found that out when I was out one day. Really pleased to come across that. So very cool. Right, this is something that I picked up from Discogs. As you can see, it's on a green vinyl there. Um, this is a cover of Rock Your Baby by George McRae. Um, this is a, by a band called Tomatoes. As you can see in the back there, it's a Japanese band. Yeah, really nice version. It's been on my Discogs want list for quite a while, but was coming in at 15 or 20 quid, which I didn't want to pay for shipping. So um, I think I eventually got it for about five euros, I think. So happy with that. So very cool. Right, okay, very quickly, and a little bit of a novelty. A friend of mine um, owns a label called Tour Records. He's put out 14 or 15 releases now, uh, but this one I'll show is a little bit of a novelty. This is uh, the Madeline Rust with uh, This Time Next Year. Now, the Madeline Rust are a, a band out of Nottingham. This is interesting though because it's uh, it's an, a lathe cut 8 inch record, so I'll show you there. It's, uh, yeah, I, I don't have any other 18. 80 inch records so uh yeah quite quite nice really but uh one of 50 yeah nice stuff and a great tune as well i might do a, a needle drop on that actually I'll show you this um he uh you can see from the art the artwork that this is another release that he put out a couple of months ago peter parker's rock and roll club you can see the sort of continuity with the art artwork there across releases and across bands which is quite nice but uh yeah worth looking out for Right. right then, the last record that I bought, sorry about that, I had a coughing fit. The last um, record that I bought was this, a, a double compilation on Soul Jazz Records. It's uh, Studio One Lovers Rock. Now all of these Soul Jazz reggae comps are fantastic. So well put together, beautiful pressings. This one, it's got some nice liner notes done by Lloyd Bradley. Now, if you don't know Lloyd Bradley, he wrote a book about 20 years ago now called Bass Culture, which is easily my favorite book um, on, on reggae fascinating stuff well worth checking out if you can get a hold of a copy um, but yeah so this is a bit interesting one really because I say Studio One Lovers Rock got some lovely stuff on here by Alton Ellis uh, a great seven minute version of Tumbling Tears brilliant Carton and the Shoes Let Me Love You a lovely eight minute version there then other stuff by Marcia Griffiths The Heptones uh, Horace Andy now when I think of Lovers Rock I tend to think of the um, the British artists so the likes of uh, Janet Kay, Carol Thompson, uh, Cassandra, Dennis Bavel, that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's a great compilation, but as I say, that's what I tend to think of when I think of that particular part of the genre. But yeah, um, yeah, nice compilation. Definitely worth checking out if that's your thing. <coughs> right then, uh, I won a competition. Uh, Steve, Psych in the Valley, had a, a competition which was um, name your five favourite kink songs. Now, um, yeah, quite a few ent um, entries. I put my my list forward, and uh, yeah, the live sort of draw and my name, well, my six-inch penis name came out, which was great. And this is what I won. Uh, it's a picture disc. I think it's a record store day release for the 13th floor elevators. Now I don't own anything by them at all. Actually, the, this is uh, say it's a two-sider, so uh, you're gonna miss me on one side and try to hide on the flip. You're Gonna Miss Me is the only song of theirs that I knew prior to getting this because it's used in the opening sequence of High Fidelity. Uh, I don't have any of their albums, and I must admit, I should check out, uh, check out more of their stuff. So this was really nice to get, so thank you, Steve. But at the same time, he also included a couple of other records, a couple of compilations. So first up, um, Down to the Last Heartbreak, which is a lovely deep soul compilation on Kent, uh, 1988, Ace Records. 
really nicely done. I only knew a couple of songs on this, it's got to say a lot of stuff on here by artists that I wasn't familiar with either. But certainly, I, I can see the Turner, uh, Sure Ain't Me, Benny Scott One More Time, JB Troy, I'm really thankful. Yeah, just lovely stuff. A great compilation, and uh, he said on there, uh, he put a little note on the front, basically saying, up there with the Dave Godin comps. So I, I definitely agree with that. Lovely stuff. Thank you for that. And one other thing, which was uh, on the high top label, and it's a, a, a Latin jazz comp. Uh, yeah, so it includes stuff throughout the 50s, 60s and 70s and that's why I'm listening to the Willy Bobo. I pulled that out because one of the tracks on this album is features on the comp. So uh, yeah, and this is lovely as well. So definitely yeah, right up my street. So thank you so much, Steve. I really appreciate that. Look, three great records, of course. I've had a little bit of other VCLT as well, but I'll, I'll show that in my, in my next video. So right, okay, I'll try and whiz through these, these few other things. Right, the avant-garde, John Coltrane and Don Cherry. This is 1966 on Plum Atlantic, and that is a UK press. Um, I got this for a really good price. It was on the wall in my local record shop for 30 quid. I ended up paying a tenner for it. I bought this along with some other bits and bobs, but yeah, the price is about a tenner for me, which I was really pleased with. Now, I'm a little bit undecided with this. I bought this back in April, and the reason why I haven't showed it before is because I keep going back and, and playing it just to try and get my head around it really um, and the reason for that is because it doesn't really sound like a John Coltrane album it was it was recorded in I think 59 60 wasn't put out until 66 by which point he wasn't recording for Atlantic anymore but um, I read a review recently of this I, I sort of looked online to try and get my head around what was going on um, five there's five pieces on here Three of them are Ornette Coleman compositions, and I think that's basically it. It sounds like more like a, an Ornette Coleman record than it does a John Coltrane record. Um, it's, a, it's a nice record, and I say I've played it quite a bit, but it's not something that I, I, I got on with very easily straight away. But uh, yeah, please find it, and a lovely copy. Actually, what's interesting about this as well is that it's got a, a record shop stamp on the inner bag. Reddington's Rare Records, for anybody from the Midlands, um, yeah, Reddington's throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, I think they closed sort of mid-2000s, um, was one of the record shops to go to in Birmingham, so yeah, cool. Right, okay. Talking of John Coltrane now and spiritual jazz, um, this is a new album that came out a couple of months ago. A band's called Maisha. The album's called There Is A Place. It's uh, an, another London, UK jazz release. And this is fantastic, one of my records of the year. Um, it's spiritual jazz, and to be perfectly honest, there's, there's a, a clearly a massive John Coltrane uh, influence on this record. Um, yes, yeah, so um, New Bio Garcia plays sax on this, and you know I've said before how much uh, uh, I love the stuff that she's doing. So, but yeah, and a great artwork as well. Yeah, a, a lovely, lovely album, uh, five tracks. Yeah, and it just really works as a whole. So definitely recommend that. Right, I also picked up this. This is. Uh, uh, an album by a band called Rasputin Stash. Now, this is a, uh, an album that was put out by a reissue label called Athens of the North uh, back in 2006. It was put out. I didn't know anything about this. Now, this band were from Chicago. They made two uh, funk albums from the early 70s. Uh, the, this, I have the second album. This is called uh, Devil Made Me Do It. It came out in 74. But they had one before this, which is a great album. I've never come across it. Um, but this is some unreleased stuff. So, which has been put out by Athens of the North. I didn't know anything about this, don't remember it coming out. I think I got it for eight quid off um, off eBay, uh, including postage, so please about that. So, yeah, nicely done. Um, it's some of the, the, the sort of funk type stuff on here. It's, it's in, of the, of the, in line with the barcase, that sort of sound, that sort of mid 70s, late 70s sound. But yeah, my sort of stuff, please to pick it up. It opens with a, a nice cover of Al Green's Love and Happiness, so I might do a needle drop on that, so that's pretty cool. And finally, just one other thing, I picked this, this album up again at the very beginning of the year, I haven't shown it. Um, it's by a band called Black Smoke. Um, yeah, so this is on Casablanca Records, Chocolate City Records. It's from 1976, and it's... Um, it's a, it's a funk album in, in the way that, well, it's, it's similar to Rufus. If you like Rufus and Chucky Khan, this is definitely your theme. But it's definitely a record of two halves. The first side is absolutely fantastic. 
it is fl full on funk. The second side gets a lot more ballady, which uh, it's not really my bag. And I think that's why I haven't shown it before. I keep going back to it and just and trying to play that second side a bit more, and it's just not sitting right with me. But the first side is great, so yeah, definitely be keeping it. So very cool. Cheers. <laughs> Don't believe. 